This is just a little video about hallmarks of maturity that you can detect when talking to somebody or reading what they write. It becomes important because if you detect that a writing or a person is immature and you have to deal with them, it helps you know how to deal with them. I get a lot of comments, I get a lot of emails, uh, I read a lot on the internet, and so that's why I'm passing this stuff on. It saves time in knowing how to deal with somebody. And the other thing that it does that's really important, it saves you time in figuring out how much to read of what a person says. Same thing is true in videos, okay? So I'm gonna start there in the videos. The first thing that might not be so easy to detect but is really determinative is the look in the eyes of the person. I don't know why this is true, but there is a blankness in the eyes of a person who is immature. It's as if they don't know how to interact with the world. It's like when you look at a baby or a, or a physical child. The physical child's eyes are pretty blank. And we all can sort of detect that they're innocent, not simply because they're physically a child. You can look at a child and tell if a child has a certain amount of maturity beyond that child's years simply by looking into the eyes, okay? So that's the first thing. The second thing is the way the person talks. A child parrots. It is a real thing, and in fact it's kind of a backwards idea or back door idea on how you can detect that God is real and you know Christ is real and all that. When a person is born again, they really are a child all over again. And there, that blankness appears, even if the person is age 50 or 60, you know, like me. You can tell by looking into their eyes how blank their eyes are. And then by their speech, you can tell that they are childish in their spiritual maturation. All right, their speech, the speech of a child, a physical child or a spiritual child, is very much parroting. You know, a parrot, you can teach a parrot to talk. It has no idea what it's saying, but it can repeat your words. That's what spiritual children do. That's what physical children do. They parrot what they hear, and they have no idea of their own what those words really mean. They're trying to learn what those words really mean by talking. They are repeating what they hear. They do believe it, but they don't understand. Okay? Your, um, their whole vast denominations, which the people in them demonstrate what I'm saying. Anybody who's a Calvinist, anybody who's a Catholic, anybody who's King James only especially. The King James only people will never grow up, ever. That, that the only thing they know how to do is parrot. They have absolutely no understanding whatsoever, okay? And the Calvinists are a little bit better than that, okay? But not much. They're parroting their teachers. They don't have any understanding of their own. They parrot, okay? Um, Catholics, some of them have a certain maturity to them but not very much. They're a little bit above the Calvinists in terms of how well they can articulate a thing. Not always. Again, if you find a Catholic who's parroting the Catholic line, you find a Calvinist who's parroting the Calvinist line, you find a King James only who's parroting the King James only line. All those people are spiritual children, no matter what their physical age is or no matter how um, they might be mature in other ways. They're spiritual children. They're never going to go past it. Because here's the mark of maturity. The mark of maturity is that you think for yourself. You study for yourself. You read for yourself. You articulate for yourself. You understand the material for yourself. You internalize it. It's no longer parody. It's something you actually personally understand. And that's very rare, especially in Christians. But it's not only the Christian where you find this kind of 
the hallmark. Okay, you can find it in anybody at any age. A person who parrots material to you and has the blank stare, you know, the blank eyes, they're, they're immature, all right? Now, that matters because, like I said, you have, that tells you how to deal with them if you have to. That tells you how much attention to pay to what they say. It doesn't, it doesn't mean that a person who's immature can say nothing good. It just means that whatever they say, you have to, if they're immature, you have to take it with, um, you, you have to be more skeptical. Because their own understanding is not being, is not coming out. They're just repeating what they hear. Atheists in particular demonstrate themselves to be extremely childish most of the time. Not all atheists, of course. You know, anything I'm saying is not everybody, but it's a lot. Okay. Um, atheists go by, and this is another hallmark of, of childishness and parroting, they go by consensus. They're all hung up on science, as if science were God, see, because they have to replace the real God with somebody else. So they're all hung up on science, and science this, and science that. What they're doing, like any child, they're parroting what they hear. They have no actual understanding. They're parroting what they hear because they're trying to be, trying to be, more mature. They understand that it's important to be mature, but they're not. So they're trying to hang on something they consider authoritative, and they don't really understand what they're saying, but they're hanging on to something they consider authoritative for whatever it is they want to believe, and then they're using that to justify their belief to themselves. And the same thing is true, you know, for the Christians, the, especially the denominational Christians. One of the hallmarks of maturity is also that you get past needing to do that. An atheist who's more mature does not need to, ev to invoke science to justify his atheism. A Christian who is more mature does not need to invoke his denomination for his belief. Okay? You have to graduate past this need to grab onto some uh, human authority, okay? You have to go past that before you start to mature. Maturation means that you think things for yourself. You think for yourself. It doesn't mean that you reject authority. It means you're skeptical about it, and it also means that you're um, not willing to simply take what somebody says for granted. It means that you also, and this is the most important thing, you actually want to know the material for yourself. Most Christians, they don't want to know the Bible. They don't want to know God. God isn't of interest to them. He's something that they grab onto, like a human authority, in order to make themselves feel good about themselves. And the atheists are doing the same thing with science. Okay? A person who thinks for himself isn't interested. He, he, doesn't, he doesn't have that ego problem anymore, or as much. And so what he's now doing, see, because the essential quality of maturation is that you go from me to the outer. And Christian is from me to he, from the me to, the, to God. You go from me to people to God in maturation, of a human, even of a human. Me to people to God. So people who are stuck on people are a little more mature than people stuck on the me. But they're not mature enough because they're not stuck on God. The height of maturation is when you're stuck on God, really just God, not your denomination, not even the Bible. Okay, the Bible is the Word of God and that's why you care about it, because it's the Word of God. And it's God you want to know, so that's why you read it. But a childish person is reading the Bible because he's supposed to. A childish person is reading the Bible because it makes him feel that he's doing the right thing and that makes him feel good about himself. And he gives it away the way he talks. Now there are other quicker hallmark characteristics of immaturity versus maturity that show up in speech. Amongst atheists, for example, one of the hallmark characteristics of an immature atheist is that he's got to use the F word all the time. He just he thinks that makes him feel important and adult. This is what you know, 16-year-olds go through in high school. 
it makes them think now they're old enough where they can use swear words and their parents won't scold them. So they get all hung up on the fact they can use square words. And unfortunately, there are a whole lot of people in this life who retain that hang up even when they're in their 50s. Those are people who are not emotionally mature, not, you know, they're not mature mentally. They think it's cool to use square words, so they use them a lot. And I hear people that talk like that, I'm like, oh, okay. I filter out 90% of what they say because they're too hung up on that whatever it is they're going to say it's going to just be parroting what the world says because that's what it is okay amongst Christians instead of using swear words they use what they consider spiritual vocabulary because that makes them feel more grown up like brother or sister the minute I hear somebody say brother or sister when they call me brother or sister the minute I hear that I know I'm talking to a spiritual child Period. If you're thinking for yourself and you're more mature, you drop all that stuff. You drop the churchiness. Okay? You drop the rituals. You drop the, the do good deed thing. Because you don't care about that anymore. You're past that. All you care about is God. When you're a spiritual adult, all you care about is God. Alright? Well, not. When you're a spiritual adult, you're between people and God. But when you're mature, all you care about is God. It's one of the hallmark characteristics of maturity. That only God interests you. Everything else has stopped being interesting by comparison. It's not that you hate everything else, and it's not that you reject everything else. It's just not as interesting to you. So you can roughly gauge, atheist or Christian, of course the atheist isn't interested in God, in a way, um, you can gauge the maturity of a person by how much do they talk about themselves? How much do they talk about other people? How much do they talk about God? Where's their focus? Is their focus mostly on God? Then they're more mature. Is their focus mostly on people? Then they're maybe, you know, just coming out of childhood and they're just a, like a young adult, okay, spiritually or mentally. Do they talk about themselves? Then they're still a child, whether they're Christian or atheist or anything else. A child will talk about what he thinks, what he wants, what's important to him is his opinion. Or, and when he's talking about anything else, he's going to grab onto an authority to justify his opinion. See, it's his opinion that's running everything. He has to be right. He has to, it's what he thinks, what he wants, everything him. He's all focused on himself. So he uses God, if he's a Christian or, you know, theist. He uses science, if he's an atheist, in order to justify his own opinion that he wants to have. So he's just using something external to buttress his own ego. When you hear people that are doing that, you ignore them, pretty much. Or you just sort of, okay, I'm talking to a child. Um, the vocabulary, like I said, brother, sister, and the Christian, okay, uh, spotting the party line if they're a denomination, the vocabulary of the party line. In the atheist, it's a, a penchant for swear words and, you know, oh, I'm scientific. Oh, that's the next thing I need to say about atheists. It, a penchant for, for talking about science, 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 science as if that justified his position because he's really insecure about his position. He needs to grab on something external to justify his own opinion to himself and therefore he thinks that'll justify it to you. The other thing that atheists do an awful lot is they tell you how how free they are and how they are rational and how they, they the, the, you know, it's the truth, the truth, the truth. Honey, if you're really rational and you're really mature and you're really scientific and you're really seeking the truth, you don't have to tell everybody that that's what you're doing. Your speech alone will indicate it. And your more mature atheist doesn't do that. Your more mature atheist doesn't constantly tell you how rational he is. Okay? He doesn't tell you that he's about the truth. He doesn't run down a different belief as being a fairy tale. The immature atheist has to run down a different belief as being a fairy tale because he's insecure about his own belief. 
an immature atheist has to say that he has no faith. He's proud of the fact that he has no faith. He's, he has to say that faith is irrational because he's insecure about his own opinion. The same thing for a Christian. A Christian's going to have to spout the party line of his denomination because he's insecure about it. Because he's parroting. He doesn't really understand. This is his way of saying, I belong to something bigger than myself, therefore I'm a good person. He's hung up on himself. Okay, a more mature person doesn't think about himself. He's busy focused on the outside. And like I said, you're more mature if you're focused on the outside of the world and people. And you're even more mature if you're focused on God. So I don't know if that much helps, but um, I thought it might be sort of helpful to know some kind of benchmarks. And maybe you knew them already, but uh, that's it. Peace out. Where, how do I stop this thing?